welcome to hosting your welcoming library. You should have gotten two red crates that look like this. And one of those crates has 30 picture books in it. You'll know exactly what those are. But one, um, you open it up and it looks like a pile of Tinker Toys. So I thought what I would do is walk you through best practices and how to put it together. It's pretty straightforward, but I thought I would make one in front of you. So the first thing I do is I pull out six blocks, find a place to perch this. What you are building is a four square book display. And yes, my amazing partner designed this and he was a big fan of Tinker Toys. Um, so that's what this is based on. So you have a set of dowels that are slotted just so they have a little bit of give um, on the edge. Don't be too super concerned on making a firm connection right away, but we're going to connect all these squares with dowels. We really wanted to not just ship you 30 books, but to ship you something that allowed you to celebrate the collection um, when it's on site. Okay, so I've got my first four squares and throughout assembly, what I found is just putting it it's on its side, just using your incredible strength, just using the weight of your body to solidify that. So if any of this feels loose, so these are, these are handmade wooden pieces and, and depending on the humidity, sometimes they're loose, sometimes they're really tight. If anything is, is too loose, just pop out that dowel and put in a new one that's a little more steady. That's layer one and I'm gonna put on the next layer. So I'm just gonna grab six dowels. See, some of them are a little tighter than others. That's gonna happen. This is a piece sometimes I forget and I'm really angry at myself when I do the next layer. So these are your sliders. You have eight of them and then you're gonna put them around the dowels. So these both stabilize the fixture and will eventually work as bookends. So I usually give myself another row. We're going up another layer here. Okay, so I'm gonna put three of these blocks ac across. Now this is super silly and everybody else makes fun of me. I always put the wood grain going the same way. I think it doesn't fit the other way, but that's an, actually an impossibility. I'm gonna connect these three together. The centerpiece is the hardest one to do. So I'm putting it in this hole and then connecting it with this one. And it goes. An easy way to do the corners is to actually make yourself a triangle. So I'm putting it into one hole just lightly and into all three, and then I can put them together. Great. And I do the same on the other side. I take one block, look at what connections I have to make, and very gently connect the three holes, and then in. Okay, so like we did before, I'm gonna use just my body weight, which is heavier than it used to be, stronger than it used to be, we'll say that, just to make sure that all of those are sunk into place. If you don't do that, you'll end up with some lopsidedness as you get higher, but they all feel, you'll feel it when they click into place. And the nice thing is there's no up or down. If you get confused, like I just did, doesn't matter. Okay, another layer of dowels. Now you might get some, again, like that one feels super loose to me. I'm just gonna set it aside. Yeah, that's a better fit. These are all made in two different wood shops. 
and the great state of Maine. And the dowels are, are cut at a wood shop here too. So another layer of the six dowels. And now I'm gonna put those sliders on again. You're gonna end up with some extra pieces. Um, that's okay, because you can also build it a different way. And we'll talk about that at the end. Um, it also allows you, if you feel like one is too loose or one is too tight, to have some flexibility there. For this last, these last corners, I'm making, I don't even know what it looks like. TV antenna? I don't know. I'm making this little corner, connecting it in three spots, and bringing it in. Any point where it feels loose, just make a replacement. Again, making this funny little shape so that I can connect lightly, one, two, okay. Okay, the whole first section is done. I am gonna actually take it right onto the floor to give it some leverage to make sure all the pieces are tucked together. I'm giving it gentle pushes in all six places. We can turn it. Oh yeah, see you get some really nice creaky connections. I just keep turning it. Make sure we're all connected. Now I'm gonna flip it on its side. Oh, see we got a loose connection there. All right. You might wanna put one back together with a new dowel. That one I'm not happy with. Yeah, that's it, I think. We're in good shape, okay. I took some dowels and put them along the top. This is a great place, actually, if you have loose dowels you've rejected, perfectly great to have loose ones up here. In your kit, you should have a banner with two pockets. So that first pocket goes over in front of this just loose one and you might have to do a little leaning in to catch this one. Sometimes I do this. All right. In and snug her down. That one in the back is optional. Um, some people like it to give it a little bit more straightness, but if you press outwards on these dowels, that should stay pretty taut. So this is kind of when it becomes a bookcase. In the magic red box, there are these shelves. Um, you'll feel that they actually don't feel particularly smooth. That is on purpose because the books are gonna sit on them and we don't want those books to slide. So they should slot right in. A little tricky to get them in the smaller spaces. You can also, you don't need to do it four square high. You may have a high, you know, sort of one of those waist high library shelves. You can build this one, two, three, four squares um, across and only one square high. You can still put the banner on the top. So some of the extra pieces are so you can do that if you want to do it. Um, you saw me shimmying the sliders into place, sort of have to move them in tandem. If they're too, if for some reason they're too loose, um, just put the one in front up a little higher than the one in back and they should lock into place. And then the final shelves. You can, I wouldn't suggest moving it with books, but if you wanna move this um, to a different location, um, to a different classroom, it is really actually quite light and you can pick it up and move it out. So you're gonna have 30 picture books. So these side pieces are so you can lean books this way, but that you can also open up those books and display them there. So there you are, that's the 
how the Welcoming Library goes together. So you may find <laughs> in your box um, a little rubber mallet. Here's the mallet that's been made out of our pieces. I would not use them on assembly. So remember how we were using our body weight to sink everything into place. So don't use those mallets to whack everything into place because eventually you're gonna get some splitting of the wood. What these are for is when, when you go to take it apart, sometimes having a little, um, a little tap tap will help these separate a little easier. Um, so really just a slight tap with these when you're taking it apart. If you, if you do not have um, a mallet of any kind, these actually work really good too, is just to give a tap, tap, tap when you're breaking it down. Um, and that's, that's the whole thing. I'm really excited that you've chosen to host this in your community and represent the beautiful diversity of the immigrant, refugee, and first through third generation experience. You're doing important work and thank you.